Hi, Jim Melcher for Desert Owl Media. Thanks for joining me. I've been trying to get this video out for over a month. Just want to quickly give some impressions of a film provided these days by Astrum in uh, the Ukraine, in Ukraine. Formerly Svema, um, and the film is FN64. It's sold under the uh, brand name Dracula by the Film Photography Project store, FPP Dracula. I think it's a really wonderful emulsion, fine gradation, very fine grain. And uh, it, I found with uh, the 120 version that it's got quite a latitude as well that I'd never, I'd never heard that it had this latitude. We'll, we'll see the scans. I haven't posted the scans yet, so we'll see if I still have that opinion uh, later on. Anyway, um, it's on a, an unusual polyester base, a PET base that has two qualities. One, which is great. It lies perfectly flat. It, it doesn't curl a bit after development. And um, it's very thin and tough, really hard to cut. Don't try and tear it with your teeth like you can with the Kodak and the Ilford film in the darkroom. Um, and, and another aspect of that polyester base is it pipes light. So that means that light can enter the outer edge. And, uh, and if you leave the film with the tail hanging out in the light for very long, you can start to damage the film. It starts to expose part, portions of the film. And you'll see that in some examples that I'll, I'll put in here. Right away, while we're thinking about it, I'll post over this a photo uh, that someone posted of a, of a color emulsion that he had left out for, for a week or something on his coffee table. And it really, the, the, the pictures got very much affected in, a, in a, probably a bad way, right? Um, looking like a light leak, but it, it isn't. Um, it's light piping. Anyway, here's some examples of light piping on the 35, and then I'll show you what, um, what my 120 looked like when I'd pushed it two stops and developed it for that. Here's the contact sheet for my uh, FN64 roll that I shot. And you'll see on the rebate here, along the edges here, 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 and here, you'll see the light piping, what it did. It only affected the frame here and here. I'll try and uh, get you a little close up of that in a sec here. Okay, so here's the rebate. You can see this was the first roll, I mean the first shot on the roll. I don't think I exposed this to light much at all. This was probably just from lying around a little bit, waiting for me to load the camera and loading the camera. Um, I didn't think at all about light piping, so I'm not 100% sure. But you can see what it does is the light enters here at the edge and it travels through the film all the way through at least how many frames here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine frames. And the original rebate, you know, that was cut off when I developed it. And it travels through like fiber optic. Anyway, it doesn't affect the film at all, the emulsion at all until it hits the holes. Then the light is trying to get around the holes, right? Um, or it's escaping into the hole area, coming out the back side of these holes. I think that's it. It's coming out the back side of the holes, or the front side of the holes, and reflecting in there. Oddly enough, the first few holes didn't seem to have that much of an effect, but this eighth hole here on this frame it affected it so much that it cast this 
light through the entire uh, frame. Here's a little bit of light cast by that, um, by a break here. I'm pretty sure that's not in the photo. I'm pretty sure that's an artifact. Well, no, it stops at the beach. So maybe it's, maybe it's, an, uh, maybe it's in the photo. So this isn't so bad. You can just see it goes along, it gets darker here as we go, which is really odd to me. And then um, dark again in the fifth frame. Here we are at the sixth frame, quite dark. And then it starts to skip a few holes here. And then bang, 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 bang. And then very faint, it almost skips an entire frame here. And then a few in the ninth frame, but by the 10th, and ever after, the light piping is having no effect. Here, I'll get that last frame up there, last set of shots. Uh, this is the roll of FPP Dracula. Of course, it's Svema FM64. I accidentally shot this at 400. So I pushed it, you know, over two stops. I had to decide whether I was going to develop it for the frames that were shot at box speed or develop it for the frames that were shot at 400. And I decided to give it the extra time to try and get the 400 shots because there were things I wanted to see uh, how, they, how they would turn out. I was testing flash. So that's what we have here. These are the 400 shots. I'll show scans later, but I was, oh, here we are starting to move into that. That's box speed now. Um, it's, these are remarkable. I mean, that image here is a really, a lot of lovely detail. I can't wait to see how it scans. I'll show how it scans. And then here you even have usable results, I think, for what was shot at box speed. Probably we're going to find that these clouds <laughs> won't show detail when we properly um, set the scan for this part, but that's a lot of detail everywhere, detail in the shadows. I'm so glad that these turned out. This is a, a site up in Superior, Wisconsin, <clears throat> an old um, taconite loader. That's like a cathedral inside now. It's abandoned. Um, it's really lovely. So, and then here's another thing. Listen to that. That thin polyester base is remarkable. This is so flat and um, so almost dangerously thin. So I'll show some scans. Um, really love this film. Thanks for joining uh, today, and uh, we'll see you next time.